Hey guys, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. So somebody in my mentoring group, a aspiring developer, somebody with some ability, somebody with some talent. And uh, so he has a job and he's working in a job and, and he's learning a lot. The boss likes him. Everything's kind of cool. It's web development. And at what point he's asked to, and this is early on in the gig, he's asked by the boss to uh, work on a technology he hasn't worked on before. So he, uh, he decides to fire himself. He says, I can't do this. I don't know enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy, he says. And the boss says, don't worry. You just learn it. Don't worry. He goes, no, no, that's it. So he fires himself. He quits. And after firing himself, he's got no job now. And his boss is like, come back. You know, don't worry. You, this is, you know, you, you got to learn. Yeah. He goes, no, 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 that's, I'm no good. I'm no good. So he gets on to uh, the mentoring coaching calls. We have them every other week. And, you know, not just myself, but other people in the group said, what are you doing? Why are you firing yourself? And he goes, I didn't know what I was doing. And I, even though I explained to him, and he's taught, and you should understand this, if you're new to development, what you should understand, as a professional developer, you will be asked on a regular basis to learn new things, to do things that you don't already know. So you can't freak out about that, right? You can't freak out about that. Never fire yourself. Let them fire you. But any competent manager, anybody who understands the software development game at any level, with any level of experience, knows that there's no developer in the world who knows everything. It's literally impossible. It's impossible. And so you have to expect as a professional developer that you're going to be asked at some point or you're going to be tasked at one point to have to learn and use some technology you have not used before. In fact, that's a big part of your job. Yes, a big part of your job is to learn new things on the fly. That's why I keep saying fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals. You have to learn your fundamentals if you want to be a professional developer. Why? Because when you have a mastery of the fundamentals, it's much easier for you to learn new technologies. Brings me to another point. The other point is that there is no such thing as learning the wrong programming language, except for one. That, of course, is Ruby. You never want to learn Ruby. No, just kidding. Even Ruby is fine. Even Ruby is fine. That's just a little joke of mine. So, one of the things I hear from people over and over again is, oh my God, Steph, Uncle Steph, am I going to learn the right programming language? Is this, should I learn JavaScript? Or if I learn JavaScript, am I in trouble? Is, is, what happens if nobody wants JavaScript? What am I going to do? Or they'll say, Steph, should I learn Python? I don't know if I should learn Python. Like, is there jobs with Python? What happens if I learn Python and there's no jobs, I can't find jobs? What's going to happen? Well, nothing's going to happen because... You can't learn the wrong programming language. There is no such thing. That's number one. There is no such thing as the wrong programming language. Number two, there is no such thing as a programming language that is inferior to another programming language. Let me say that again. No other programming language is inferior to another. Mm -mm -mm. Does not exist. It's an illusion. So how can that be? Isn't Ruby terrible? a terrible programming language? Well, Ruby aside, that's a special case. But Ruby aside, all these programming languages have their pros and their cons. The best programming language in the world all depends on the project that you are working on. So, for example, if you are developing a web app, server-side web app, small business, small project, probably your best choice today is PHP. That being said, you can still do a great job with JavaScript, Node, Express, Python, Django, and depending on the project, even Ruby Rails. It really depends on the project. Now, on the other hand, if you were developing a web app for a small business, C++ or C would not be a good choice. It would be a very bad choice, in fact. Yes, you could write a web app with C or C++, but it would take you 10 years to get something done versus if you did it with Python, PHP, uh, even Java, .NET, uh, JavaScript, of course, Ruby, 
you can get it done in those languages in a fraction of time, like you get it done in a couple of months. So you, it really depends on the job that you're working on. On the other hand, if you're developing a game engine, you don't want to develop that game engine in Python or Ruby or PHP or JavaScript. Not a good idea, typically. Typically, if you're developing a game engine, thing like the Unreal Engine, for example, you want to do that in a fast, super fast, highly performant language like a C++. So there's no wrong programming language. There is the wrong match between programming language and the project you're working on. Analogous to this, or analogy that we could use, is let's say you want to go off-roading. Hey, I want to go off-roading. You know, you want to get yourself a Jeep, right? A 4x4 of some sort at that point. To take your Porsche 911 or your Lamborghini off-roading is probably not going to be a good idea, right? You're going to break your car in about two seconds. Does that mean that Porsche and Lamborghini are terrible cars? No, they're not good for off-roading. But on the highway, you want the Porsche or the Lamborghini, you don't want the Jeep, you know? Jeep can do the highway driving, but the Porsche and Lamborghini are going to kill it. You starting to get the idea? So back to the guy who, got, who fired himself from the job, even though his boss did not want to fire him, he fires himself, then he leaves, then the boss calls him back a week or so later. Uh, my dates are rough. You know, it could have been two weeks, could have been three weeks. And the, the boss wanted to unfire him. And despite the fact that his boss said, just come back, don't worry about it, you, you'll learn. He didn't want to be unfired by his boss. So now he's telling me, he just reached out to me recently, that he's talking to his boss, boom, doing, you know, the boss knows that he's good, right? The guy is good. The guy just has uh, some lizard brain issues. This is lower brain stuff. And so he's just dealing with that, those insecurities and so forth. That's why I'm plugging here, yeah. For my mentoring program, I actually built a lizard brain training module in there because I saw that this was a huge issue. In fact, I've been training people for many years. I've been working with schools for over 14 years. The biggest problem people have is not intellectual. The biggest problem that people have is actually emotional, psychological, lizard brain, primal feelings, whether it be insecurity or arrogance or, or thick-headedness. Most of the time it's insecurity. And uh, so you got to learn to get past that. You got to learn to get past that. One way to learn to get past that is to understand the landscape. And the landscape of software development is, A, number one, nobody knows everything. Number two, you're going to be asked, very likely, you're going to be asked if you go work for somebody to do stuff that you have not done before. This is par for the course. So that means have solid fundamentals so that learning new stuff is pretty easy. Number three, you can't learn a bad language, except for Ruby. You can't learn a bad language because all the languages share many of the same properties, whether it be PHP, Python, JavaScript, Java, C Sharp, many others. They all share many of the same concepts and constructs. The syntax, the code that you write, looks different, but that's not important. That's the least, least of your concerns. Understanding the concepts, the concepts and the constructs and the basic principles and the best practices of software development, which separates noobs from the pros. That's my focus, actually, in my program. So, for example, in JavaScript, Java, C Sharp, Python, PHP, Ruby, C++, they all have this concept, they all have this concept of a variable. They all have this concept of a collection. They all have this concept of object orientation and inheritance and so on. So I could go on and on and on and on. All these fundamental principles of software development are consistent with some variance across all the languages. The hard part about learning this stuff is not how Python does a class or how JavaScript does a class or how Java does a class or PHP, etc. It's understanding what a class is. This is a, not a classroom. This is a, a programmatic class. Anyway, anybody who knows programming knows what I'm talking about. A class is a basic construct and uh, concept in software development and it's expressed in all these different languages and many, many others. And so once you understand what a class does, when to use them, how to use them, what inheritance is, what interfaces are, method overloading, all these type of things, these are 
basic concepts, concepts and uh, techniques that you can leverage in building software. Once you understand these, once you understand it in Python, you know it in all the languages. There's some nuances and little differences here and there, and you know, PHP may be better, a little better here, and JavaScript will be a little better there, and so on and so forth, but it's all the same. So don't fire yourself as a developer. Let yourself be fired. When you get a job, don't worry. You're not, you're not expected to know everything. You will learn, and the great thing about uh, the software game is that it's a very boots-on-the-ground, rubber-meets-the-road profession, meaning you will see very quickly what somebody can do, what they can't do. You will get feedback right away in terms of whether the software works or not. It's not, it's not ambiguous. It's very obvious. It works or it doesn't work. Fantastic. And so that means you can progress very quickly as a professional. That's why I tell people that in the software game, certifications are not so valuable. So I offer and provide certifications because I built a certification platform and integrated it into my uh, mentoring program and, and into Studio Web because a bunch of districts wanted me to, they wanted to be able to provide certification for the students. But as I've been saying for years now, certifications are worth this much in the software game. You see, because it's so obvious whether or not software works or it doesn't, it's so obvious how performant in, an individual is, we don't need to in the software game. We don't need to rely on certifications. We'll see very quickly whether or not the individual writing the code is competent or not. That's a great thing, right? That's a great thing. I'll leave you with this one last lesson. The one last lesson is that being a professional software developer has much more than code involved in your competency. That's not the best way of saying it. Basically, it's not just coding. There's also the communication and the interpersonal skill. So one of the things I te keep teaching people, learn to be a good listener, learn to be consistent and on time, if you say you're going to deliver your code by Friday, if you have to stay up all night, deliver your code by Friday. Learn to uh, be responsive to other people's ideas. Develop interpersonal skills, communication skills. One of the questions I get asked all the time, how do I get into the freelance game? Well, you have to start developing uh, a network, let people know who you are, become somebody that's valuable to others. And a big part about about that is good communication skills. You have to learn to communicate with others, written and verbal. This goes a long way to advancing your career. So if you know how to write code, let's say you can develop a basic web apps or a responsive website, there's no more you need to learn technically. What you have to do is get into the game. You wanna get into the game as quickly as possible so that uh, you can start being paid to learn new stuff. I'm telling you right here and now, you take somebody who spends one year doing tutorials and courses and training versus somebody who does three months training and then gets into the game, starts building real projects. After a, a year of a person who's been building the real projects for, what, the seven months? The person who's been building projects for the majority of that year versus the person who just kept doing tutorials, the person who's been building projects will be miles ahead of the person who was just doing uh, tutorials on their own. You gotta get into the game. So in my software, uh, in my mentoring program, rather, I get people, my, my goal is to get people building things right away and the mentoring's there to support you along the way. If something comes up, we don't know how to handle this, how do you handle that? That's what the mentoring's all about. Like, yeah, you say, do this, do that, do this, do this, do this. And then you look like a pro because you got Uncle Steph telling you how to do things. Besides Uncle Steph, there's other people now involved in the group. Anyway, there you go, that's the story. So um, uh, don't fire, your, fire yourself from a particular job because you feel you don't know enough. Don't worry about, not, uh, about picking the wrong programming language, it's impossible. Expect to have to learn new things. Expect to have to, to not know everything getting into the game. That's par for, par for the course. As I said, I've been doing this since 1994. 94 
is the first time, it was even 94 or 95, first time I got paid to write code. I don't count what I did in the 80s when I was a young kid uh, working on my Texas Instrument computer doing the bouncing ball uh, program. I don't count that. I'm talking about paid commercial work. Started in 94 or 95, I forget now. It's been a long time. I'm telling you, with each project that you do in the real world, the better you're going to get. It's not, you're not going to know everything. You just learn as you go. Uh, as long as you have those fundamentals locked down, then you'll feel fine learning new things and picking up stuff as you go. All right. I hope you found this useful. I'm Uncle Steph. I mentor people in the ways of professional software development and so much more. You can check me out at unclesteph.com. Links below. You can get my standalone courses or you can get my full mentoring program. And uh, I hope this video is useful. If you disagree with anything I've said in this video, please comment below. If you think this video was cool, please comment below. Say, this was cool, Uncle Steph. If you don't like my hat, it's the beanie, uh, give me two thumbs down. Not one, but two. Uh, give me two thumbs down. Show me and tell me how much you hate my hat. Um... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Cheers.